Hey guys, good morning. God bless. Welcome back to Twist and Shout. I'm Char and welcome to another episode of Bible Plus T. This morning, y'all, I am going to be reading from the word for you today. Uh, this is my second time waking up because I woke up the first time to put my daughter on the bus and I went back to sleep. And this came to mind and I said, all right, Lord, let's see what's going on today. And this is the word for you today. Many of you know this book because I send it to you whenever you order some oil and butter. And I think next go around when we get some, I'm just going to ask who wants one to read along with me. And I'll just send you one out because um, I actually found a way to send it really cheap. At first, it was kind of costly. But anywho, I'll do that for you guys. Um Today, um, the scripture is actually going to be coming from Luke chapter 5. I'm going to go ahead and pray now. Um, Father God, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for waking us up. We thank you for giving us life. We thank you for our daily bread, and that's both spiritually and naturally, Lord. Lord, we ask that you bless the word. Bless those who will listen and take heed to your word. Lord, bless me that I may speak the truth only, not opinion, Lord, I ask that you even help me to allow the Holy Spirit to do what he needs to do in me. Allow me to be obedient, Lord, to your will and your way. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, this one is a pretty interesting one. How do I know? Because I done read it a thousand times, because this is like my thousand times trying to record. But we won't let Satan stop no show, right? Okay, this one says, he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's. That's Luke 5 and 3, New King James Version. Fishing lesson one. Lesson one, invite Jesus into your boat. That's the starting point. Oh, actually, let me zoom in. I'm sorry. Nothing has greater influence on your personal success than whether or not you have Jesus Christ in your life. By himself, Peter fished all night and caught nothing. But when he brought Jesus on board, he caught more fish than he ever than he had ever caught before. Now, Jesus never performed a miracle without a purpose. He always used his miracles to illustrate principles. So this incident teaches you what to do when you fail or when your best is not good enough. For Peter, his boat represented his livelihood. When you're a fisherman, your boat is your business. It's significant that Peter invited Jesus into his business and Jesus used it as a platform for his ministry. Are you willing to do what Peter did? If you are, the Lord will bless your business. Indeed, he'll bless anything you give him. If you give him all your life, he will bless all of it. But if you give him just part of it, he will bless just that one part. And here's another thought. Having Jesus in your boat eliminates the fear of failure and reduces your worries about the results. When Peter made Jesus his fishing partner, the results were incredible. But don't miss the sequence. First, Peter used his boat for Jesus' purpose. Then Jesus blessed Peter's boat and used it to take care of all Peter's needs. Jesus said, seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. Matthew 6, 33. Did you get that? Everything you need. I would say for me, um, I am going to take the truth from this passage and apply it to myself. Yesterday, I fast and I fast a day last week and I just want God to make it known and make it evident if it's meant for me to make YouTube full time or not. Many of you, if you don't know, there's a lot going on with my husband's health um, that may possibly eliminate his work for a while. We don't know yet. And we're talking about a pretty scary situation where we're not going to know where income is going to come from. So total faith. And for me, you know, it's been about, okay, this started out being like just something to do because I was at home. But now it seems like my home stay is semi-permanent, at least right now. And I've been asking God, okay, what do you want me to do about my business? What do you want me to do about this ministry? How do you want me to handle YouTube? Because it all started with me just making handmade butters, grease, and oils. And now I'm started Bible studies and reading and 
you know, doing a whole lot of Jesus. <laughs> and I don't want to be disrespectful to those who got here on the basis of hair content. But I, I am who I am. And I know the God I serve. And I believe in Jesus with all my heart. And I know that even where it says here, you know, when you invite Jesus in something, he will take care of it. He will take care of you. And that's what he has done. I have, with God's help, because it's nothing I did, I have successfully started this YouTube and became monetized within a year. And it has been providing. And I'm, you know, I'm not going to say that I get a thousand dollars a month. Um, but what he has given me, it has been enough. It has sustained me. And I thank God for that blessing. And right here lately, I was like, Lord, is it time for me to separate the faith content from the hair content? Like, what do you want me to do, Lord? Because right now it's like creating that balance. But a many of you, I don't know if you know or hear me define the title or the name of the channel, Twist and Shout. Uh, twist, obviously, for the hair and shout, obviously, for the glory to God. So kind of mush that together. And it's a cute name. It's a relevant name. And if you keep the name, then it's relevant and you can st I can continue to go with how I'm doing. But what I want to do is, is I want to get some order about myself when it comes to my faith-based content because I have not been given my best foot forward and I have been not making that a priority. Um, but God has been dealing with me. I have been praying about it and I've been trying to put more time and effort into my faith content. And I've been asking God to help me and he has been helping me. Y'all know that I'm impulsive, I'm indecisive, I'm random, but God is a God of order. So I want to make sure that that's reflected in my work. And I give it all to the glory of God because this is not about me. This is not to boast on me, but this is just to... This is for the glory and kingdom of God that he's using me. And I thank God for the opportunity. So this particular message does hit home. And I just want to leave y'all with, you know, whatever you give to God, he definitely will bless it. And you have to learn to recognize the blessing. Like everything isn't just money. Everything isn't just a car, clothes, big houses. Like there's blessing in being healed and being delivered. There's blessings in... Uh, being able to understand what you read in the Bible and being able to share that. There's blessing in having an opportunity to pray. There are so many people that are bound and struggling that they can't even part their lips. I know personally because I was in that situation where I didn't want to open my mouth. I didn't want to pray. I didn't want to give God praise. And God had to pull me out of that season. So we have to recognize these blessings and we have to recognize that any and everything that we are a part or involved in, God can bless it and he can take control and it will be even better than what you think you was doing. And that's how I can, I feel about YouTube. And that's my testimony that I started out just coming into this, like, okay, if I can just get 500 people, I'd be all right. And God has blessed and increased. And I am now at 8,000 plus, and that's in a matter of two years. And I, every day I wake up, I'm still shocked. Like I look at the number, like it's going to change. It's going to go down. Like I just, you know, in my mind, I did not think YouTube would be the thing for me as far as like being this full fledged in, being this committed. I thought I would be working by now. I mean, I just had so many thoughts in my mind, but God knew he had a purpose. Everything happens for a reason. Because mind you, I started this right before the pandemic and that kind of eliminate getting a job because I had to be home when the children are homeschooling. And God just, he just knew, he knew, he knew. And I thank God for his knowledge and understanding because we know nothing or what we do know, we know in part. And that's for our good. And I just want to encourage someone like this is saying like, hey, if you put Jesus in something, because my whole thing was I love God that much and I love him so much that me, me and my husband both shared the fact that, you know what, we don't mind talking about God. If you're, if you want to talk, we're going to talk. If you got a question, we're going to try to figure it out and let keeping Jesus at the center. Like what would Jesus do? How would he react? How would he respond? How would we handle the situation? Because we are not flesh. We make mistakes. We're not perfect.
But I just thank God for the opportunity. I thank God for me and each and every one of you. You guys have blessed me beyond words. And even with my blessing itself, like for a season, God was, you know, handling that. But I do feel like um, I kind of got in my own way with that. And it kind of went left instead of trusting God. And just like this passage is saying, you know what, what you give to him, he will definitely take care of. But what you try to do and hold for yourself, and I want to make sure I word that differently because I don't want it to sound like, okay, if you don't particularly say, God, take over my marriage, he's not going to actually, you know, have grace and mercy or favor in your marriage because you, you don't want to make it sound like that because sometimes we don't think to say everything. But I would say your heart, what's in your mind, what's in your heart, are you willing and able to give or surrender these areas of your life? That's the difference because sometimes we can pray and forget to say something, but the content of the heart or your intentions, like I could mean fully well, or I could do well on like, Lord, I just hope that you keep me and my husband together, help us to get along, help us to be at peace, help us to um, work this church together. You know, I can pray these things, but it doesn't necessarily mean that I surrender them to God. Like you have to, in your heart and in your mind, say, you know what? I can't do anything with this. I don't have any control. I don't have any power. My strength and our marriage is from God and we need to give it to God and let him sustain it because we cannot. We need God's help. And that can be marriage, finances, your business, um, your children, your mental state, your health. Surrender it over to Jesus. Let him take charge. Let him take over. Let him be in control. Oftentimes, you know, when, when something so dear to us, like our children, that's one of the biggest thing I see um, with us as women. Like, man, we want to hold on to our children for their life. Knowing we don't know everything. We didn't do something or, and I feel like it's a guilt thing. Like when our children don't turn out the way we want them to, is oh, something I did and I got to fix it. No, Jesus is the fixer of problems. We need to take it to him. Any area of our life can be surrendered over to God, but we just have to actually do that with our whole hearts. And once we do so, don't try to go pick it back up. Don't try to manipulate. Don't try to put our hands back in it, but totally give it to God and let God do his thing. And y'all know, like I said, I've been praying and fasting about starting a women's ministry or maybe um, recreating the YouTube. I don't know because I still, I'm still natural. That's not going to change. But I do feel led to um, bring on a more faith-based content and whatever God says. And I'm just going to, going to ugh, excuse me, I'm going to continue to fast and pray that God gives me direction at all times and for me to not get in the way of that. Amen. So I hope this word blessed you on today. It blessed me. Again, um, these are booklets or pamphlets that I give out with my orders, the word for you today. But um it's actually associated with my husband's business, but his job, sorry, not his business, but nursing homes, um, EMT businesses, um, probably would have these in their facilities. If you're interested, they are free. You don't have to pay for them. If you would like one, please let me know and I will get one out to you. I love you guys. God bless. Take care. Bye.